If you're a theme park fan, you know this one simple fact. Some theme parks have lots of theming, others have some theming, and others have no theming. The question is though, where do we draw that line? Where should theming be? How well themed should a park be? And how important ultimately is the immersion of a theme park? We'll try to answer some of these questions today. One thing we see in the theme park chain market is how theming differs from chain to chain. Granted, most have some small patches of theming, but of course, the best theme chain by far is Disney. Disney is the pinnacle of theming and the pinnacle of immersion. They do well in every area of theming, in pretty much all their parks. Visually, the buildings and architecture is different from land to land. Then everything from the rides themselves to the landscaping fits in the respective areas. We'll come back to some of these things a little bit later, but for now, let's just keep in mind that Disney does theming best. Universal is also quite good. In some ways, I think they're one step below Disney, but in other ways, they do just as good. They have different properties that they base their rides off of, but they do an incredible job of immersing you into different themed lands. Merlin also does a really nice job at theming. I'm speaking here of their European parks, but also their Legoland parks across the world have patches of amazing theming. SeaWorld's theming at one point I think was better than it is now. The more SeaWorld adds rides, the more I question how much they really care. Pantheon at Busch Gardens Williamsburg is a good example, a coaster that has so much potential for theming, but really doesn't have much at all. Then we have Six Flags and Cedar Fair. These chains have properties to theme things too, but they pretty much just prefer to keep things looking nice, and there's something to be said for that when it's done well. Audience also plays a big role into which parks decide to do theming and which don't. This is for independent parks and chain parks alike. To me, there seem to be three types of parks. You have your thrill parks. These usually are owned by Six Flags, Cedar Fair, but there are other companies too that pitch in. These parks tend to try to attract people by their major thrill rides. The tall roller coasters, the fast roller coasters, the crazy flats, those are the types of rides that are going to bring people in. Also, and perhaps I'm thinking of Six Flags specifically here, they tend to be a slightly cheaper option than the more elaborate parks, and it's something that teenagers can enjoy more often. Then you have your family parks, which are, of course, more approachable to families. These come in all shapes and sizes, but Disney is the pinnacle of family entertainment for theme parks. And then you have children's parks. A lot of these are pretty small, but there are some good ones like the Legoland parks being probably the best children's parks you're going to find. So not all parks are well themed. But the question is, why? Well, I think there are a few reasons. Number one is not necessarily lack of care, though that can also be another reason. I'm thinking specifically price. Let's look now at three of the best themed areas to ever go in any theme park. The Wizarding World of Harry Potter originally opened at Universal Studios Orlando in 2010 with a cost of $265 million. I don't think I have to say that not too many parks have that budget. That pales in comparison to Disney though. Galaxy's Edge originally opened in 2019 at Disneyland and then a few months later at Disney's Hollywood Studios. This land cost $1 billion. That's crazy, and when Cars Land opened at Disney's California Adventure back in 2012, that land cost a little bit more at $1.1 billion. Granted, these are the most expensive options, and they poured so much love into those lands. But the point is, theming is expensive, and to do theming right is even more expensive. So what's another reason besides cost that some parks don't have theming? As I alluded to a few moments ago, one reason is that they flat out just don't care. I personally don't agree with this line of thinking, however, some parks, as I said, try to bring in people just based off the rides alone. What's another reason? I think space available can be a reason. Theming also takes up a lot of space when it's done right, so certain parks just don't have that footprint. Let's look at the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. There are other examples, but this is a good one. It's a boardwalk park located in Santa Cruz, California, in Northern California. In the way of theming, this park does what they can. They have three separate dark rides, which for a boardwalk park is pretty darn impressive. But outside of maybe a theme facade and building, they really don't have the space to do anything more elaborate. Though I think if they could, they would, because they clearly care about this place. Land available can definitely put these parks in a predicament in that situation. And to go back to the lands I just mentioned a few moments ago, those three are all very expansive. Even if, theoretically, the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk, for example, wanted to build a land like the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, like Cars Land, like Galaxy's Edge, 
it wouldn't be possible even if they had the budget because they'd have to remove so many rides just to put that land in. And while a lot of regional parks with minimal theming get by just fine, the most visited parks in the world tend to be the ones with the most theming. What does this show? I think it shows that most families really do care about being transported away to another world. There's something about leaving the normal context and normal circumstances behind as you are really in a different place. This is completely different to what you normally are used to. I know this might seem like just a big advertisement for Disney. It's not. They just happen to do this very, very well. Let's go back now to some of the things I mentioned earlier and ask the question, what ultimately do you need to be a well-themed park or have a well-themed area? Here are the things that I thought of just off the top of my head. There should be some form of clear architecture or some form of clear idea as to what this land is. To phrase it one way, your western themed area should not feel the same as your boardwalk themed area. Your main street area shouldn't feel the same as your futuristic themed area. Examples like these. As a general term, attention to detail is really, really important. This evidences itself in so many ways. The music that you hear is really, really important, I think, to tie into the area. Being in Galaxy's Edge and hearing pop music would just be weird. It also goes beyond just the music and the visuals. How about the queue lines themselves? When you're waiting for these attractions that are also well-themed, you need to be immersed into these experiences. I think the point has gotten across. Attention to detail is very important. Okay, so let's answer the question. How important is theming at amusement parks? From the bottom run at Six Flags to the top run at Disney, here is the distinction I'm gonna make. Is theming necessary? No. Is theming preferred? Yes. Can you have a good park with little to no theming? I think so. Six Flags does it, Cedar Fair does it, various independent parks do it. And while the top parks like Cedar Point or Six Flags Magic Mountain might be elite parks, I think generally speaking, you can't really have an elite theme park without good theming. In the coaster community, maybe that's a hot take, but hey, that's what the comment section is for. So let me know what you think. How important is theming at amusement parks? And if you enjoyed this, I'd really appreciate it if you considered subscribing. There will be lots more life-changing topics and videos just like this coming soon here on Gridiron Coasters. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.